Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back. This is Luke the Goon, a.k.a. Luke Newcomb. And today, we got a very special review for you. I got my homie, Mike Sears. We're here to review Mausoleum. It's no secret that I'm kind of the AXE guy on YouTube right now. Absolutely. So uh, it's only right that we review this album. So I guess, you know, let's just get into it. Unless there's anything you want to add, Mike, you know. I just want to say I'm uh, so happy to be on the show, brother. Appreciate it. We Thanks didn't work together there. before. Top 10 all our Zulu Luke songs and speak your clout. Yeah, Other things yeah. we did together. You know, Luke is my fucking brother, so, you know. We'll have, we'll right. have all the links in the description to all that stuff. Words. It's Mike's channel. So, uh, let's see. First track, The End. There's not really a whole lot we can say about this. It's mostly just a skit. It's yeah. kind of setting up the whole album for the way that it for what's going on. It's basically AXE. They're in a church. There's some protesters outside, and they burn the church down. Um, burn in hell, you fat bastard! Yeah. <laughs> I work two jobs in this community. Uh, the the only kind of notable thing about this track is that uh, everybody that's that's like yelling are actually Zooligans who've been to the church. They kind of went oh. in the booth and recorded for it. Yeah. And the other thing is that uh, it's the title track. It's E dot N dot D. And the E and D stands for evil never dies. Oh. And that's kind of setting up AXE dying and then being into the mausoleum and rising, coming back to the dead. Um, this is probably like their most concept heavy album, I would say. Yeah. Um, Church of Zool is a lot like that too, but this this to me is definitely the most concept heavy album they've done. Um, so anyway, uh, oh the other thing on that track, if any of you guys are into super famous fun time guys, um, Eight Legs is actually one of the people who's yelling uh, during that intro. So anyway, uh, the actual first track, track number two, of the song is uh, Mausoleum. This was the um, third single that they released off the album which i learned um during the live stream that i did the listening party that we did in forever face alley that this wasn't even supposed to be a single oh, sure. they yeah they didn't even this wasn't even a plan to be a single because they kind of felt like this was just kind of like the intro to the album and the 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 first track leads into this track so they didn't even plan for it to be a single i think mne probably looked at it and were like it's called Mausoleum. Well, let's release it as a single. So that's what happened there. Uh, this is uh, a song that, like, the chorus always gets stuck in my head, like, Same. all the time. The uh, mausoleum. This is where the bad folks go when, when they, they die. die. Yeah, it's, I mean, this is a pretty dope track. Not my favorite track, but it's it's definitely a good title track, and it definitely leads into the rest of the album. Um. Slash Dave did his thing on the production. I, I was gonna say Slash Dave really kills this whole album. Yeah. Um, especially I know the the Halloween single that we won't be talking about, but the Halloween single is all like crazy, crazy. But yeah, Mausoleum, he really kills it on this one. Oh uh, yeah. Banging. I love the production. I seen the lyric video and I was like, oh man. I had to, I can't wait to this to come out. Yeah, 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 yeah. Being the third single, especially hearing the other songs first and this one coming out, it was just like it was the anticipation was killing me at that point. Yeah. Likewise. And so, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I was gonna say it's just just like anticipation, man. You yeah. Know? So next track, track number three, is it was my favorite track, and this is actually the very first song that I heard. It's uh, Blood Moon and Back. And like when I first heard this song, I like just started giggling like a schoolgirl because like the chorus is so wicked. It's so, it's, you know, I love you to the blood moon and back. Hands around your throat, slid it slow, lost control when you spoke of letting go. It's just like, oh, I, I, I lost it when I first heard this song. I was like, this is like, this is them bringing back the wicked shit for sure. Absolutely. 
And this is probably the most wicked song, I think, on this album, probably, at least in terms of like lyrical content, because the other stuff's definitely horrorcore, but this is like wicked shit. You know, this is like twisted murder, murder, murder in my mind. You know, I agree. One of my favorite zoo songs, man. It's going to be up there with the greats to me, you know? Yeah. Like I said, this was like this. This was my favorite song. It's it's probably among my favorite. I've got like three songs that for me are top of the list. And this is one of them. Um, Yeah. This song is just sick. And again, Slasher Dave. Like just absolutely kills this track. Yeah, he does. Like I, I like the little like uh, there's like these little there's this one part in the track where it's like a breakdown almost, and you hear like these kind of like bells and stuff in the background. It's just like I think it's during Joe's verse when Joe's rapping, and then there's like that that the the like bells and shit that are going on. Yeah, it's so dope. Stabbed him forty times. I, I, yeah. I couldn't. Have... Oh, shit's banging. Shit is banging. Yeah, this song is this song is like and being the first single, I was like when I first heard it, it just makes sense. This was like definitely the best first single they could have put out. Yeah, you got me stupid excited, bro. Like oh it's just crazy. Yeah, this is like the song, like I said, I was really excited for people to hear. And when I heard that it was the first single, I was like, people aren't ready for this, dude. People Fucking- are not ready for this song, dude. Fucking Lee on the chorus, fucking, oh yeah, it's it's definitely a domestic abuse song. So, <laughs> <laughs> so crazy. track number four. This is a lot of people's favorite track on the whole album, and it is it's 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 one of the three that I was talking about that are my favorite, and that's Rituals of Rot. And actually, the sleeper to this song is the intro. It's another yeah. song. It's called I, nobody knows the real title, but it's like it's Bill like singing and it's like say goodbye. And then there's like a car crash, yeah. And like that's the roll, song, that roll another blunt really and wants. get high. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, this is probably gonna be on the next album, which is kind of like rumored to be Necronomicon 2. Ooh. And so it you know kind of makes sense, you know, with the, the lyric of, of that. But let, 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 let's fucking get into Rituals of Rot. This is like it's got the zombie reference. You know, all it takes is a bite. You know, it's got the zombie reference from what's that? Is that Head of Horns or is that Psycho? I think it's Psycho. Um, yeah. This is the best like zombie song I've ever heard. I like, I agree. I, with ni- nineteen seventy nine, Dawn of the Dead type shit. Yeah, and this is like this is a song where Joe Black kills it, bro. Like yeah. Joe kills it. And I actually, I've, I've got them right here. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna. This is the, this is the stuff that fucking kills it for me. My ankle drags. It's painful to walk fast. Intestines dangle, getting tangled in the tall glass. Nice. Grass. I need to eat, though I get nothing from it. Chunks of my meat plummet through the hole in my stomach. I can't remember anything before I went beneath, but I'm sure I got some memories stuck in, my, in teeth. my teeth. Oh, bro, <laughs> Joe. Joe, <laughs> oh my god, killing him, bro. I said it tons of times. Like Billy Obey is my favorite, but they all are fucking equally insane with lyrically, you know. And they've all got like these songs where like they have like one guy that really shines sometimes, yeah. you know. And this is definitely where Joe really, really shines. I mean, Lee kills his verse too, yeah. and Bill's got the lead into it. Bill's Bill's verse is kind of funny because Bill is kind of the only one who's kind of like a survivor in this song. Yeah, he gets into the car crash and then the zombies are coming towards him. Yeah, and that's the other thing about this album is, and and they said this in the live stream too, is that this album is very much more like a storytelling album, like they're definitely telling a story, whereas kind of they've done more kind of mm, concepty type stuff before, you know, yeah. not as much storytelling as they are in this album, like almost every track in this song has got a story to it mm-hmm. as yeah. opposed to some of the other albums in the past. But yeah. This is, this is one of the, my top three uh, songs on this album. Yeah, and I'm mad at that. That's my shit too. Real fucking horror esque. Creepy yeah. shit. Yeah. Love it's like it. Romero, you know, it's yeah. just, and we I love We ain't hear this level of horror since Nod is in, uh, tear, ICP, and twisted shit. 
Oh yeah. You this know? whole album like is definitely like a throwback to like 90s like you know late yeah. 90s mid 90s like ICP shit that was going on and shit like mm-hmm. and I, you know you know Slasher Dave is like a real real hardcore juggalo too. So like awesome. it definitely shows, you know, with the production and stuff like where the influence is from, you know. Yeah, and yeah. and he was mentored by Mikey Clark, so Oh shit. Know, all makes sense, dude. Fuck yeah. Yeah, so that was Rituals of Rock. And then at the end, I almost forgot about this. Good thing I got my notes. The end of this song, there's that skit with the 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 coroner. Yeah. Get the, it's it, they, it's Lee Carver who gets a call and she's like, oh, it sucks. I really wanted to see you. Yeah. <laughs> and it's it's the the boys are like in the morgue. On the and slab. Then come to, yeah, on the slab. And yeah. then they come to life and they kill him. Yeah. So, yeah. that And then that's um, – that kind of leads directly into uh, Donna the Dead with uh, Monoxide. Now, I have a very unpopular opinion about this song. Oh, this shit. is the this is the one song that I will skip sometimes. Oh, man. and I think it's because it's the one song that's like, other than Rigor Rectus, which we'll get into later, is yeah. the most different. Like Donna the Dead is so like slow and haunting, and yeah. like. You know, monoxide on the monoxide on the course really kills it. So, like, when I'm chilling in my car, this isn't the kind of song that I'll like bump. You know, just because of the nature of the song. Yeah. I know a lot of people love this song. Yeah, For me, yeah, some people really love this song. For me, it's eh, it's not my favorite. You know, it's probably yeah. you know, it's pretty low. It's probably my least favorite song on the album, which is probably blasphemous for some people to hear because I think some people really really love this song. Yeah. But I like it a lot. yeah, it, it's still a dope song. I mean, Monoxide really kills, really kills it on the hook on this album, Down on this song. Sorry. Yeah. yeah, it's so it's he, he does such a good job of making it like like I said earlier, like haunting. It's like a real, it's kind of a depressing song actually if you listen to all the lyrics and shit. Like, some some Dark Lotus, Debbie in the Dark feels. Yeah, 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 for sure, mm-hmm. dude. And that's like what I was saying. It's like that old school, you know, ICP, you know, Lotus shit, especially yeah. like in the darker elements. Um, yeah, and then that goes into um, Life, L-I-F-E, Let It Fucking End. This was the second single that came out. And this is the other song, like I said, my top three. This is the third one. It's This is just a, just a crazy song. It's just so sick. Joey. Um, yeah, oh, Joe, God. Joe with the the uh, the uh, bathtub death in the beginning. Whoa! Uh, yeah, it's just it's 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 so killer. It's like a, it's it's. I almost want to say it's the most rock. Th- th- this whole album has a lot of like rock kind of influences to yeah. it, but it's not the twisted kind of rock influence. Which which is good. This is way more like heavy, like. I don't even know how to describe it really. It's just it's like they were saying the whole time before they released this album. It's way different. It's much different than anything you've heard from the boys before. It's and it definitely different. is. It's got way more of the rock influence in it. But like we we're saying, it's also got that like nineties, you know, heyday of like ICP vibe as well. I agree. Which, which sounds weird to say. Because like how do those two things go together? But they just do, you know. And if you really think about Malenko and Jekyll Brothers, they did have a lot of rock influences in those albums too, especially Malenko. Yeah, yeah they did. And yeah. Uh, just, yeah, just, I love suicide songs. And uh, when it's grime, you're like Esham, 13 Ways of Judgment Day. You know, this is right up there with it, in my opinion. Shit like that, just, oh. Yeah, yeah this is this is the crazy song. Let it fuck and then. Ass. Similar to that song, I guess, kind of. There's a lot of songs in this album that are... I mean, this album kind of has a... The whole theme of this album is really death, so... Mm-hmm. You know, there's a deathbed. Um, and this is another, like, sick song. It's just My basically... favorite song, Luke. Oh, really? Yeah. Yes. This is just, just kind of like a... I mean, it's just talking about dying, basically, like laying on your deathbed, really, you know? Woke a lot of these songs are... Pissed yeah. and upset. Rather ride away in my deathbed instead. My and then this is another one where I've got Joe Black's verse, and it's like this is sick. It's like 
I just wish I had friends to find my remains. I mean, it's been weeks and it's just more of the same. And I forgot to feed my cats and now they're gorging on my brains. <laughs> like I Joe, like I said, Joe for me, like just takes this whole album really, man. Word. Like I agree. Don't get me wrong, you know, Lee and Bill always kill it on their verses. They're super yeah, consistent the whole album. But Joe just like I don't know, man. Pandemic must have like got him into a mood, man, where he was just like, I'm gonna write, bro. Yeah. He letting Billy and Lee take all the verses, you know. So. Yeah, he's like, oh he came back. He came for a throat on this album, bro. Fucking hard as fuck. The next the next track, this is like this is nails, which is probably the most like I don't know if this is the right word, but it's the most abstract song on the album or the most like, you know what I'm saying? It's, yeah. it's, it's a different, they, they, there's not as much storytelling in this song, you know? When Lee said, cut my motherfucking hands off, that suicide prevention. Yeah. That's, that's, I actually, I, that's one of the lyrics I was about to write, you know, pessimistic behavior. That's beyond comprehension. I cut my motherfucking hands off, call it suicide, suicide prevention. Nice. Bro, yeah, that was that's oh, why I said Lee. Goodness. This is definitely where Lee was like killing it, bro. I always say and, Lee Calvin is the, the the illest lyrically to me. Oh yeah, he's geez. man. If you if you ever want to just like see Lee like spitting, just look up Astronomicon Lee Carver freestyle. It's, I've seen that shit. Oh, yeah. it's sick. Dude, he killed Gmo, man. Yeah. He killed Gmo freestyling, man. It was that, that's if you ever want to see something sick, that's it, man. It was during karaoke night at Astro Two, I believe. They were doing like California Love. Yeah, they were doing California Love, and Lee just goes off the top. It's sick. Fuck yeah. But then th- this ends with um, uh, Choppin's Funeral March, or AKA Undertaker's theme. This, uh, Nails is actually hard. Nails is actually a pretty short song. Because like halfway through, it turns into like the like I said the the Undertaker theme, you know the funeral march, yeah. and then that leads in, which is funny because that leads into Rigor Erectus, <laughs> which is like the the happy go lucky song on this album, yeah. you know Church of Zool with Zooligans, and you know they always have kind of like one song that's kind of like a little you know kind of fun, you know yeah, and Rigor Erectus is that dude. It's like every time I hear this song, it's just like you got to break into a dance a little bit, dude. It just keeps going. And when I first heard this song, I really thought that this was going to be a song that was more divisive. I thought more people would be like, oh, I don't like that track. You know, I hate that because my uh, impression of a lot of people who like AXE are people who are like, you know, they're bringing the wicked shit back, you know, and Rigor Rectus. And, you know, lyric. I guess lyrically it is, but it's so like jazz, like so like jazzy and upbeat, upbeat yeah. and like kind of goofy. It's kind of a goofy song. It's like a cemetery. It's like their cemetery girl, only like more yeah. happy. Um, you ain't got no song, baby. Yeah, I I really thought this was gonna be, and then like uh uh Joe's verse. Joe's verse is again the most hilarious. You know, he like uh, basically he like takes a bunch of drugs and then he like. Fucks this girl's corpse and then wakes up with a six inch maggot for a dick. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it, the whole that's that's the the whole it's just basically a necrophilia song. <laughs> yeah. If you're curious. And it's like so fun. It's just such a fun song. It's like I could picture myself in the summer just like rolling my windows down and listening to the song. Oh it's yeah. Like, it's that kind of like it's kind of like that driving with the summer breeze type song, you know. It's so it's just I'll, I'll it, like it. I said. Yeah, it's that like I said, it's that one song on the album that's like super upbeat and just a lot of fun. Absolutely. And, and then like right after that, they, you know, they go the other direction with uh, "Deadline." Oh. Uh, yeah, this is another like really dope song. It's kind of like in the middle, kind of in a weird spot, but it's still yeah. like really sick. Um, uh, I, my favorite line, I think it's in Lee's thing, uh, Lee's verse. It's uh like you having fun? No, it's phase one. What's two? Fuck you! It's the a la Zuli Lu. Like the fact that he fit that in there because yeah. that's kind of like a a thing with AXC, you know, kind of like a tagline, you know, fuck you. It's the a la Zuli Lu. The fact that he was able to fit that into Deadline, I thought was dope. 
it's hard. Yeah, I, you know, if you're curious, Deadline is just like you're waiting in line to die, basically. It's yeah. the whole theme of the song. Again, everybody kills it. You know, it's, it's another kind of like uh, rock heavy song, I'd say. Yeah. Too. It's kind of along the lines of like nails a little bit. Sometimes nails on this song are kind of close. It's so uh, hard. Yeah. It's classic. <laughs> yeah. And it's then, uh, yeah, this uh, next track is uh, Random Acts of Violence. Oh, my God. And this is a song where, like, I, I love the chorus, you know? And I like I'll be like working or something, and then I'll just think of that serenaded by the sounds of people dying. dying. No surprise, it's random it's acts of the violence. Fucking gunshots. And I, know, I know it reminds me a little bit of like Riders, you know, when they do like We Violent or like yeah. um uh, uh the other song Lee's on the verse or Lee's on the chorus, you know. The way it goes like that, like you said, with the gunshots and stuff, it reminds me a lot of that. So that's a perfect song, man. It's just hard yeah, and I think I, I think this is the song where Bill has that verse about 3D printing a gun and grabbing his hoodie. He's like he, he's like a kid. He's like, oh good, he grabbed my hoodie. Yeah, he built a 44. Yeah, that, that doing like a mass shooting or something like that, dude. It's hard. Yeah, it's it's a it's a dope song. Uh, and then uh, this is at the, at the end of this one. They do like um they do this on like a lot of their albums. Where they do kind of like a spoken word thing, and this was um, Joe Black doing like the the exorcism, you know, where he's like, "Cast back foul demon," and then that leads into this is probably another one of my very top songs. Mask made me do it. Same. Yeah, this is so dope. This is like a this is like an anthem for everybody that has a forever face. You know, it's the course. The chorus is super dope. And the other really, really dope thing in this song is that Lee Carver put in a verse calling out um, Forever Face Alley, which I thought was dope. It's the uh, uh, my forever face that I copped at Zool Mart. Now I'm dwelling in an alley with your body in a shopping cart. And like because he told us in the live stream, he's like he's like, oh, in one of these upcoming songs, you know, I, I shout out the alley or like I'm like, all right. So it was like two or three tracks later when we played Mass Baby Do it. And I heard it and I was like, oh, <laughs> and then yeah. and then Bill's verse is also dope. <sighs> once you put it on it, once you put it on your faucet, your face, it devours you whole. Sorry and shit. It takes the form of your soul. Another victim that Tom poured in the mold. Which, if you know, Tom Martino is the one who, you know, makes all the faces. Yep. So it's like, oh, like he, they, in this song, I guess, especially Mass Mimi Do It, they, they, they're like so many things that, like, if you're a real fan, like a real, like, hardcore fan, I guess you'd say, of mm -hmm. AXC, then, like, you get these little references, you know, like Forever Face Alley and Tom Martino and, like, all these things that they put in the song. I love when Billy was like, good luck telling the cops. <laughs> yeah yeah well that's the other thing about this this song is that like they each each of the um verses lead into the chorus yeah. you know because it's like you know good luck telling the cops that the mass made me do it the mass made me do it you know yeah this is this is up there again with my favorite songs this is probably like you know four i guess because the other three are so dope i mean it's hard to really order these songs and like you know, because they're all really, really dope. Do you know who's doing the screaming on that? The vocals on that? Uh, like I think that is uh, actually uh, my homie, uh, Justin Grossman. He was on Almighty too, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah okay. I, I figured that was him. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. He, uh, he actually, the first time I went down to the church, I went with him. And so he was recording stuff. I don't know if that's when he recorded that or not, because I was only down there for one day and he was down yeah. there for like three or four, but yeah, he's done a lot of their. I guess he's kind of like their screaming, <laughs> their hard. screaming specialist. Yeah, it's perfect with this song too. Like, yeah. this song goes hard. And then, last song on the album, "The Harvester," which is basically just a song about death, like the actual character death, because um, the harvester is death, and it's just yep. about him coming down and like causing you to rot like taking your soul basically so it's what a way to close the album too it's just yeah epic sound to it 
that's the thing like we were saying it's like this whole album like tells a story you know it starts with you know them dying and then you know the end with and then it's kind of like the rebirth for axe kind of at the end in a way um yeah i mean the harvester this is actually another song for me that kind of is like it's a little bit like dawn of the dead for me a little bit too because it's I said nothing else is like Dawn of the Dead, but now that I think about it, the Harvester is a little bit the same because they're both like very slow and probably the least like rock-ish songs that are on the album, if you know what I'm saying. Yeah. Still dope though. Yeah, I love the, I love the chorus. So yeah. they're, all, they're all singing it at once, it sounds like. Yeah. Fucking dope. Yep, yeah, so... What is your uh do you have any uh f- how what are your feelings on the whole album? The whole album, man, it's I think it's a great follow up to well, you had Church Azul EP, but like the Almighty, it's a great follow up to that. And it's Jesus Christ. It's I could ask for nothing better. It exceeded my expectations. I love this record. You know, my Zool fix was uh you know, took care of when this dropped. <laughs> I love it. Future classic in my eyes, yo. Yeah, dude. It's another. Yeah, Almighty's like, already cemented as a classic. You know, Almighty's yeah. like right there. This is on its way. Fucking amazing record. In my eyes. For me, their stuff just keeps getting better. Yeah. Like, so I know a lot of people like Almighty is like, you know, the Almighty for them is like the be all end all, you know. And yeah. I, I'm not gonna deny it's definitely a dope album, but I even like Church of Zool better than I like Almighty. Um, I'm not mad at that. that album is evil as fuck. Yeah, I mean that's what like Church of Zool is just blasphemous from start to finish, you know. Black tongue blasphemy all fucking day. Yeah, and this 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 album is like um, it's like a I can't it, it, it's the storytelling in this album that makes it so different, you know. No. Um, it, it's 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 like a the whole song is just the whole album is really about death. It's about one thing, death. The entire album. Yep. And kind of like resurrection, you know, rituals of rot. It's almost like an entire zombie album, really, if you think about it. Because they die in the beginning, and then the whole rest of the album is about death and then the rebirth at the end. Um, and, you know, the other cool thing that they're kind of doing is AXC are kind of building their own extended universe. <laughs> you know, uh, with, you know, because they've got the Church of Zool, they've got the mausoleum, and, you know, yep. if, on the album... You look in the back, the church is in the background. And then if you got the variant cover, you can even see the boys right in front of the the church. There's like yeah. three little shadows. I didn't get them. I got me, I have two me, copies. I got the regular. Yeah, yeah, that's what I got too. Yeah, you know, they're building their own kind of like extended universe, which I think is really cool. Um Fuck they've yeah. been really good at that. Uh, I'm excited to see kind of like what where they where they take their next full length. Um, oh, yeah. Like I said, it's kind of rumored right now that they're going to do Necronomicon 2, which, hey, I'm all up for. Because Necronomicon is really dope. Yeah, um, is. They've still got a Ritz song that they have to drop. And then it's oh, been shit. rumored that they have a Blaze song coming up. So, you know, we got plenty of Zool stuff to look forward to. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, for, I mean, if it wasn't already apparent, I love this album. Uh I've I've had it on repeat, like I've probably listened to the album over twenty times, like Same. probably more than that, probably more than that, because every time I get in my car, I just put it on and it just goes on repeat. Well, and for yeah. me, this album is like the perfect length. It's not too long, it's not too short. I really like this length. I because th- sometimes I feel like Almighty maybe had a little few too many tracks on it. I mean, you know, maybe or... that's blasphemous to say, but like. <laughs> I think maybe it had a few too many tracks on it. And I feel like obviously Church of Zool is just an EP, so it's not quite enough to get, you know, your Zool yeah. fix. And then this album, just like, especially the way that they planned it all out and had everything going, you know, it just tells a perfect story. Perfect length. And the, yeah, perfect length. I like, I, I, I don't know how they would make this album any better. I'll say that. Like, I, I yeah. have no idea what they could have done to, like, make this album better than how I already feel about it. Like I said, it over exceeded my expectations, man. Yeah. You know? I mean, yeah. Especially, like, following up something, like, following up the albums that they followed up. You know, those are hard things to kind of, like, you know, 
keep impressing people with, you know, because yeah. eventually, you know, some people, they reach a point where, you know, everybody's favorite album is like this, you know, like, I mean, even look at like Twisted. Most people's favorite album by Twisted is Most Tasteless. Mm-hmm. And that's the first album they ever put out, yeah. you know, and Zool have managed to make every album they release my new favorite Zool album, you oh, know, yeah. that doesn't happen, you know, I nope. mean, you know. If you're getting better, as you said, man, and it, it, you know, just can't wait for more shit. Yeah, and apparently it won't be too long. I think we're looking at, I mean, you know, like I said, if we are looking at a Necronomicon 2, we're looking at probably an April release. In the 420? Yeah, yeah, yeah. clearly. <laughs> so it shouldn't be long. No. You know, and uh, hopefully, actually, hopefully we get an Axmas song. Oh, hell yeah. So, yeah, for me, um, I mean, it's hard to give any album, like, you know, full perfect score, you know? So maybe I would do, like, a 0.5 or something like that. I don't know. Yeah. Like, you know, whatever you want to say, 4.5, 9.5, whatever your rating is, because it's hard to give any album a perfect score, at least in my my view. But if I would if I would give it a perfect score, I would. I don't. Where would you be at, Mike, on yours? Uh yeah, you know, Speaky Club podcast goes by the Sauce Magazine rating. Mm, you know? Mics. Yeah, so I would say five mics because I like everything on here. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect, you know? Top three songs for me? Shit. I would say, uh, well, Deathbed. Deathbed, of course. Uh, probably, uh, Life. And Mass Made Me Do It. It could change, but Deathbed will never change because that's number one for me. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like I said, you know, my three are probably Life, um, Rituals of Rot, and then uh, um, Blood Moon and Back. Like, <sighs> see, <laughs> I yeah. forgot about Blood Moon. Oh man, yeah, it yeah. Changed. Like the, it's like you know, yeah, it changes because like when the song when the album first came out, or yeah. when I was first started listening to it, Blood Moon and Back was my favorite. Yeah. And then, like, the more I started to hear life, the more life started to become my favorite. But now the more that I start hearing Rituals of Rot and I start really listening to the story, it's like, oh, you know, it's like, oh. That's just crazy. Yeah. Yeah. So I think we're in agreement. I think, uh, you know, we'll each give it probably five mics. I mean, like I said, there's really, I can't imagine anything that I would change about this album. I wouldn't uh, change shit. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's, you know, I mean, I know, like, I'm the AXC guy, so maybe I'm a little biased, but <laughs> yeah, this for me is like killer. Like, it, I can't imagine anything beating it for my album of the year. Um, it's in my top five. Yeah. I know Mikey yeah. listens to way, way more hip hop <laughs> than I do. But yeah, for me, I, I, I mean, I can't imagine anything, you know coming out that's gonna top it um yeah if we could shit wise it's nothing's fucking with this yeah 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 as far as that goes yeah. it's not getting touched that's for sure definitely well i think we'll uh end it there um, oh yeah Bye. thanks everybody for watching um mike you got some stuff you want to plug you can find me on instagram Mike C is underscore speaky clout. Uh, Twitter, supervillain85. That's supervillain like the group. ICP, Sean Lavelle, you know. And uh, speaky clout podcast, live Saturdays. Every, uh, six o'clock every Saturday on YouTube. Yeah. And shout out to right, man. Goon, man. Thanks, man. My brother. Yeah, brother. Thanks for coming on. Um, I'll have I'll have links to all his stuff in the description. Um, again, thanks you everybody for watching. Um, subscribe if you haven't already. If you haven't, I don't know what you're waiting for. Uh, I'm, I'm up to about 420 right now. At, at oh, yeah. 500, I got a special video plan. So like, tell all your friends and get them to subscribe so you get to see that. <laughs> so you get to see see that freshness. Uh, again, you know. Uh, thanks everybody for subscribe who subscribed already. Thank you. I mean, I I never in my wildest dreams would have imagined to be reaching 400 anyway. So uh, anyway, yeah. Thanks, man. Uh, thank you everybody for watching again, and I'll see you guys in the next video.